Good evening, folks. I, I am sorry. We've had a few technical issues that we've had to work through this evening, and uh, but nonetheless, we made it through by faith. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll go right into our meeting for tonight. Father, we, we thank you for the grace that is ours in Christ. We pray that as we engage in these actions and activities, that you would uh, affirm them by granting to us success as we venture into the public square as representatives of the kingdom of God. We pray that you uh, give to us wisdom and insight so that we may move in a way that is in concert with and in sync with the purposes that you have so called us to. Thank you for these who have come. Bless them, Father, and enrich their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, I am convinced that prayer is, is absolutely essential to what we're doing here in our effort to try to uh, rescue this republic. And I think that's what we're doing. We're on a rescue mission. Uh, what we're witnessing is that there has been a deliberate attempt on the part of our elected officials in all three branches of the government to violate the Constitution. And in so doing, they violate my personal liberties, those unalienable rights that God has given to us individually. And I think we need to see them individually first, that there's a violation against me and then us. And so we have uh, gathered to, to, uh, to address that from the standpoint that we are exercising what I believe is a First Amendment right to peaceably assemble and to petition, we can change that word to demand, and to demand redress. Redress is a remedy, Amen. a remedy uh, to a fault or an ill or a wrong that has been perpetrated against us individually, uh, us and, 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 and us individually. So we are, are, are moving, I think, with an intent to try to uh, bring attention to the fact that these violations in fact do exist, but we must move, I think, in prayer. I was uh, encouraged today by one of our friends uh, that uh, we ought to make prayer a part of what we're doing here. What I'd like to offer to the group tonight is that we would assemble at 6.30 prior to our meeting and to spend 30 minutes in uh, petition before God. Uh, yes. You know, we can, we can do all that you want to do and don't do it in concert with the will and purpose of God and you'll come up with nothing unless the watchman watches through the bread of his faith. They that labor, laboreth in vain, the Bible says. And so we want to have a productive result and that requires of us being rightly connected with the purposes of God. And I'm not ashamed to say that to you. Uh, we're in a church, I'm a pastor, and I know the power of prayer. I know the power of prayer. Prayer is the, the nerve that moves the muscle in the arm of God. You want to see God's arm start moving, start praying. Right. And he'll move on our behalf. I think it was Charles Stanley that says that the shortest distance between the solution to your problem is the distance between the knee and the floor. <laughs> so we need to be praying. Amen? Amen. 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 Those of you who are watching us on live stream, streaming, uh, thank you for joining us tonight as we have assembled here as the constitutional defenders of Texas. It is our goal, our ambition, to protect the Constitution as a stewardship responsibility that has been handed down to us by, we believe, uh, the divine. God himself has given us these, un uh, these uh, unalienable rights, and we feel a stewardship responsibility to protect them. And uh, we have witnessed in our own observation over the last several years a number of clear violations to our Constitution. And what we have done here with the defenders is that we have listed those violations up to and including 50 violations that have been targeted against our rights by our government. And uh, it is incumbent upon us, I believe at this time, as we have witnessed firsthand this administration, the Congress, and the judiciary, the Supreme Court, act in a way that is threatening to our liberties. And we need to respond. Silence now is not appropriate in light of the fact that we have clearly identified issues of violations relative to our Constitution. We have solicited from a constitutional lawyer to look at our list and to determine if, in fact, our list is valid in its uh, definition of a violation, and he has affirmed all 
50 of our violations as unconstitutional. What we have done through our uh, research committee here is that we have uh, demonstrated very clearly what the violation is in connection with the Constitution. Violation one violates this particular aspect of the Constitution. Violation two, this aspect of the Constitution. So there is a nexus, if you will, between the constitutional violation and what that is inside the Constitution. For example, the National Defense Authorization Act, which was signed into law by Barack Obama in January, violates the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh amendments to the Constitution. And we can clearly demonstrate where that is so. To violate that many of the amendments to our Constitution is frightening at best that there is a suspension of habeas corpus, our right to a speedy trial, uh, to not uh, incriminate ourselves, the Fifth Amendment, and so forth. All of those are being violated. And if we don't say anything, then I think we are as guilty or complicit in uh, the destruction of our Constitution as those who have crafted such nonsense and passed it into law. And so we're glad that you're with us. We're praying that you join us and be a part of what we're doing here with the Constitutional Defenders. As you may know, we are attempting to raise $30,000. We believe that's a small investment for the rescue of this republic. $30,000 will be used by the defenders to uh, enter into the public square, utilizing media, social media, uh, radio, television, newspapers, and billboards. That costs money. And in order for us to make our case, and that's what we're attempting to do here as we list these 50 violations, is to make a case in the public square that our government, all three branches, have violated our Constitution. And because they have put into place laws that are unconstitutional, we want to let it be known by as many Americans as possible that there is indeed an authentic threat to our liberties that is targeted against us by our government. And so we are looking for you to make a contribution. We want you to go to constitutionaldefenders.com and there's a donation button. Click on that button and make a $50 donation if you can. That's what we're asking for, $50 first. But if that's something that you cannot handle, a 10, 15, 20, $25 contribution will help as well. So uh, anything that you can contribute will be a wonderful opportunity for us to pull together our budget and to pursue uh, we believe a mission that is necessary uh, in this hour. Uh, I want to give a report about how the contributions are going at this time. We have had 11 contributors show up to our site and make a contribution. 11. Now, uh, I know there's more than 11 of us sitting in here. Mm -hmm. right? So that means some of us are counting off 11, and that means the rest of you have not made a contribution. We should make the contribution first because we recognize what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. And we recognize that a small investment of our treasure into this effort is required in order for us to be effective. And then we can legitimately ask our friends to come alongside of us and, con and contribute with us. Look, what's required for us to be effective here is a sacrifice of time, talent, and treasure. I got your time. In many instances, I got your treasure, but I, I mean your, your talent, but I need your treasure as well. I'm talking to those here in the audience today. I need your $50 contribution. 11 people thus far have made a contribution that brings us to $988 that have come in uh, off of contributions online. Now, I did have a chance to go out and speak to the Cullen County uh, Conservative Republicans, and I was able to pick up as a result of my uh, uh, speech to them, a thousand dollars. So we have nineteen hundred and eighty-eight bucks mm -hmm. that's in the bank, and that's a good thing. Uh, we we do better than that. We do better than that, but we are grateful for what we have. We can certainly do better than that. Um, and then uh, I got good news today that there is a benefactor who has made available to us ten thousand dollars. So there's 10,000 coming. We won't celebrate that yet until we get it in our hands. Mm -hmm. When we get it in our hands, we'll celebrate it. But there's been a promise of a $10,000 investment in the rescue of this republic by a friend 
uh, to our uh, efforts here. Uh, that's exciting, and with that $10,000 that we're trying to raise, uh, um, 30,000, that means we have what? 19,000 plus to raise, right? But we already had 1,000 in, so isn't that great, great news? That's yeah, something to celebrate, we're excited about that. Uh, we certainly can use your help too. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in and watching us from live stream, you've been there for a number of weeks and you've watched us and you see that we're very serious about pursuing this, this particular constitutional right that is ours. And I've been asked in the last couple of days, what do we do if in fact our demand for redress is not responded to or adhered to by those who represent us? Now, our founding fathers understood that that was a possibility, and that the federal government will not necessarily respond to limiting itself. The Constitution is a paper, it cannot enforce itself. It needs some kind of enforcement. Certainly there was an attempt to do that by making all three branches of the government co-equal, meaning that they had a chance to police one another. But if they agree together to continue to rob us of our liberties and to expand, then we cannot count on any part of the branches of government to do anything for us to protect our liberties. And certainly that's what we're witnessing now. What we're witnessing is that there has been a failure on the part of our elected officials to check even the, this executive branch from making executive orders that are clearly unconstitutional. I know that I'm not a scholar, a constitutional scholar, but I do recognize when something is unconstitutional. I have at least a working knowledge of the Constitution mm -hmm. where I recognize that what has been done with executive orders in our country today through this administration, through this president, is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And if I recognize that, then I would expect for John Boehner to recognize that along yeah, with yeah. Mitch O'Connell to recognize that it's unconstitutional. And then because they have taken an oath to protect our Constitution from foreign and domestic enemies, should stand on the House floor or in the Senate well and declare these acts are unconstitutional and we will take you to court. Exactly. That has not happened, so therefore that's why Constitutional Defenders of Texas is necessary because we as the fourth branch of the government, actually as the masters of the government, they are our servants. Exactly. They serve at our consent. Amen. That's right. And they should respond to us. So we are responding out of, a out of necessity to protect our constitutional right. But our founding fathers recognized that the that all three branches could turn against us and become tyrannical in their move against us. When I say us, that is the states. And so addressing this issue, Alexander Hamilton had something to say. I want to read it from uh, the book that's called Notification, How to Resist Federal Tyranny in the 21st Century by Thomas Wood. Uh, if you don't have that book, you need to get that book. That's right. uh, it is an excellent uh, representation of the power that we have as we the people. Writing on Alexander Hamilton's response to the issue of what do we do when the government has turned against us, uh, Thomas Wood said this, it is not difficult to find support in history for the general principle that an unconstitu unconstitutional law is void. Let me stop there. I, I, when I read that, I said, this is powerful. Yeah. What he is simply saying, because it violates the Constitution, simply because it violates the Constitution, it is void. It is not a law, we do not have to adhere to it. Do you hear that? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So the NDAA, while we were biting our fingernails, we didn't have to. All we had to say was unconstitutional, null and void. void. That an unconstitutional law is void. Alexander Hamilton contended in the Federalist, number 78, that, quote, there is no position which depends on clearer principles than that every act of delegated authority contrary to the tenor of the commission under which it is exercised is 
void. Wow. All he says is if it's unconstitutional, it's nothing void. And men and women, we have 50 violations of the Constitution that this Congress and this executive branch, along with the judiciary, are calling legal law of the land. It is not. If Alexander Hamilton is correct, and I believe he is, if it's unconstitutional, then it is null and void, and we must treat it that way. We must not capitulate in any way. And so if our demand for redress is resisted or is ignored by our elected officials, then we must take our case to our representatives and our senators of this great state and demand nullification. Right. Demand. <laughs> is our duty. This is our stewardship responsibility to protect these unalienable rights handed down to us by God, not by man. And men and women, we are witnessing soft tyranny. Slowly and incrementally, this government is turning on us and expanding in a way that is absolutely breathtaking. But we are a republic. And what that means is that we are ruled by law, the rule of law. And the supreme law of the land is the Constitution. Amen. It is the Constitution. The enforcement of that Constitution, if it is not taken up by those who swore by an oath to do so, it is incumbent upon us to do so. Governments are instituted, Thomas Jefferson said, to protect our rights. And they are instituted at the consent of the government. We put them there to protect our liberties, not to encroach upon them. And if we put them there and we find them not doing what they are supposed to do, then Thomas Jefferson says, if any government becomes destructive to that end, it is the right of the government to alter or abolish it. Amen. I think we're at the point of alteration. As we make our case in the public square, our government has violated our constitutional rights, thus threatening our liberties. That's why we're here today, and that's why we ask you who are watching us by live video stream to join us. To join us here at the church. We are moving in concert together to achieve an end that we believe is laudable, that is noble and ennobling, that is to rescue our republic from tyrants who are out of control. Our government is out of control. And many of you felt that when Justice Roberts took the pen and began to craft legislation as he identified Obamacare as a tax, he went beyond the enumerated duties of a of, a, of the Supreme Court when he did that. Laws are written in Congress, not in the Supreme Court, and not in the executive office. We know that. We learned that in elementary school. So we are saying that there's something seriously wrong, and it requires of us action. But our actions must be targeted and focused with specificity, based <coughs> upon information and education. Information asked and answering the question, what's going on here? You need to be informed. We need to recognize what is happening. That's why we have this list of 50 violations. Education, ask and answer the question, why is this happening to us? That's a question we've got to ask. Because there's a dereliction that is in the public square that lies at the feet of we the people. But there's also a deliberate shadow movement on the part of the Fabianists and the progressives who are moving incrementally and subtly into our culture, ruining every institution of America, from the family to the churches to the education and academic uh, institutions are all infiltrated by these progressives and they are destroying us from within. Yep. 
We've got to respond. It's time for us to wake up, but with we move, we got to move with, with clear specificity as to what we're fighting, why we're fighting, which will give us how to fight. How to fight. And so I, uh, excuse me why I make my speech. <laughs> but, no, We connect ourselves and keep our energy going. Even here, among us, we've got to keep our energy going. And so what we'll do is we have committee reports right now. Uh, there's a timeline that, uh, that we're on trying to make our information available. A lot of the timeline is, is, is dependent upon our ability to raise the funds. So all of us have got to become fundraisers. You've got to talk to your friends, to your family members. You've got to let them know what we're doing. Show them our website. Let them see firsthand how we are moving in concert with the First Amendment expectation for us to peaceably assemble and make our case in the public square. Won't we start with outreach? Okay. Would you come? Yeah. And say your name and many are on and give us a full briefing. Okay. My name is Regina and I'm on the outreach committee. Uh, we had a very successful week. We attended a lot of different events and a lot of the people of our group were there. And uh, we handed out the flyers that had the information about our Monday meeting and to how to get involved in our website. Um, we looked for places that would be receptive to this. And so the Obama movie that came out on Friday, uh, it was called Obama 2016. We, we went to at least five different showings of that and we had a very good reception. It was really good. I also went to a, a, a Irving Republican Club, and uh, there was about 75 people there. Again, very receptive, and they want Pastor Roden to uh, speak, be their guest speaker next month, which is really good. Um, we also went to um, the Kenny Marchant, uh, was in town, he's a congressman, uh, District 24. There was probably a good 75 people there, and it was very, very, very effective because Robert and his son Ross um, actually raised their hand and were able to give a little speech about constitutional defenders and then followed it up with questioning him about his non-constitutional voting. So okay. and that's all on YouTube and it's gonna it's on our it's gonna be on our website. Or you can go to uh, Kenny Marchant, uh, right? And what's your last name? K-E-C-S-E-G, it's under that. K-E-C-S-E-G, and you can find it that way. But um, it's, it was really, really good. As the people were leaving that event, they were grabbing the cards and taking stacks of them. It was a very good event because we got to be one-on-one -on -one and talk to the people quite a bit. So um, that was that. So as you can see, what we planned and did was we thought, we're gonna go to where the groups are. So this coming week, there's even more groups to go to. We need more people involved with getting these cards. We made another 9,000, that was last week. We've used at least 1,000 of those already. So we can make more. But everybody needs to have 100 on them. Because wherever you are, you don't know what impact you can have. And uh, if you go to these groups, you're gonna have even more impact. So this coming week, please look at the, uh, it's the Facebook. It's Constitutional Defenders of Texas. There's events for all the things we're doing. Um, there's a lot of Republican groups, and also there is um, a lot of candidate forums. A lot of candidate forums is really, really good also. So I would appreciate if all of you, if you had ideas, communicate it through, uh, it's called it's info at constitutionaldefenders.com. That's the uh, email address. Of Texas. Of Texas. We kind of do that. It's constitutionaldefendersoftexas.com. Okay? And um, just email any ideas you have of places you think we should be, and then we'll call the troops out to do it. Okay, and uh, one more thing. We have this list of a lot of groups, and I really want to break that list up and have people calling it. So if you would, you can even email me, and I can email you parts of that list, and we'll keep track of it. My name is Regina, R-E-G-I-N-A, dot Imbergia, I M V U R G I A at gmail.com. And then I can email you sections of it. Okay, well thank you very much and keep the fight up. It's good. People love it. All you have to do is say, Pastor Broden started this group and people are like, oh I know him. I love him. So, <laughs> Woo! Uh, I love you.
outreach, anywhere from outreach here. Oh, that was outreach. That was outreach. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Research is what we're looking for. Research. I, 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 I sent two emails out to the research people and asked them to be here tonight. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get to research uh, next week. Uh, Why don't you talk? Right. Uh, me. Did you you want to do something for research? Okay, coming in. This is an addition by Ross. Sorry, I get it. Hi, my name's Ross. And uh, I just wanted to make a point too. I've been Facebooking a lot, which some people use a lot and some people don't. People that do use it are on there all the time, as you probably know. But uh, I've made a lot of contacts with a lot of other conservative groups. Uh, Richard Morgan was at the event that Regina talked about that uh, we spoke at and passed out a lot of information to. And he's heavily involved in the Young Republicans Club. He actually ran for Congress. He's about 20, he, he's close to my age. I think he's around 30. And uh, he ran for Congress in the uh, Republican primary in the 21st district. And anyways, he's heavily involved. And I told him, he got up and spoke to really, really sharp kid. And he uh, uh, is very interested in helping us. So he invited me to come to the their meeting tonight, they had a state uh, representative there, and I don't I don't remember his name, but uh, they hold meetings once a month. So I'll, I'll go next month because I wasn't able to make it tonight with the movie, the meeting, and I had some some work I'm still working on. But anyway, so I would encourage. The point is, I would encourage people to get on there and find people in these other groups. Um, there was a Ron Paul 2012 group. There was a Ted Cruz for state senate group. A lot of people are on there. There's uh, keep Irving accountable group that I already know a lot of those people, but I met some new people. There's um, all the Republican groups, Dallas County, Northeast Tarrant Tea Party. So if you go on there, you can get in all these other circles of people that Regina was talking about and tell tell them about the group. So I would just encourage you guys. That's something you can do on your own. So thanks, Ross. Yeah. We've got to think outside the box, and we've got to add. Um, Actions that will produce results for us. So we're, we're certainly to do so. Right? I'll reach. I'll reach. I'll reach. Yeah. Hi, my name is Brad. I'm part of Outreach. Um, one of our marketing tools that we've been working on is t shirts. And so we will be able to have our logo, a large logo, will be you know, chest size. Uh, we did modify the logo a little bit, we just added the dot com to it. And we can get those shirts at $4 a piece. They should sell like hotcakes at fifteen dollars. So um, anyway, if we uh, we have a thumbs up on that tonight, uh, we should be able to have those shirts on the flag. All right. T-shirts and that's our ball caps, right? This one. Uh, media, media outreach. Um, that would be uh, my group, and uh, we have uh, completed our letter, a letter that we're going to be sending out to all of our representatives in Austin, and also to those who represent us in Washington, D.C. The letter is completed. It's up on the internet right now. Is it, James? Did you put it in The letter. The letter that we have for our senators and representatives. Well, I didn't put it up on the one that we have. Oh, okay. All right. We'll talk about it. Well, we're going to get it up there so you can take a look at it, and you might take a, a duplication of that letter, sign your name on it, and send it to your representative. Yeah. All right, and that was something that we want to do. The second thing is that we, we've got a letter up there, why we exist, up on our website, why we exist, that, that covers some of the things that I've talked about at the beginning of our, of our uh, meeting tonight. Uh, so that's up there. Uh, we are uh, in the process of, uh, of uh, doing some pre-production, if you will. It's just right now we're sitting down and getting our concepts together for a radio program that will be titled The Patriot's Voice, uh, co-hosted by myself and Robert. And uh, it will be at the studios, uh, Bell Studios in uh, Arlington. And I think it will be after the, after the 21st. So we're, we're trying to get our context together, get our, our content together so that we can have a, a number of subjects that we can cover on there in a two hour format. So uh, that's the forthcoming. Um, and that, that's pretty much where we are right now. Right now, uh, what we need to do as we go over now, that concludes my report. Now I want to go over our timeline with us together and then 
then we'll have a special presentation from James. Are you, can you get online? What's that? Can you get online with your computer? Uh, the internet will let me reach back. Oh, okay. I can't pick it off. All right. I have problems too. Unless we put it on his and show on the projector. Okay, well, we'll do that. All the ones that the okay, well, why don't we do that? Um, that main name for that. Because we need, to, we need to look at what you've uh, done and what you're recommending for us. Uh, as I'll go forward. As we go forward. Uh, the timeline. Let's do our timeline real quickly so we can remind each other what, what we're doing and, and our actions going forward. Uh, we want to produce a professional YouTube uh, presentation that will be uh, also on DVD, demonstrating our findings no later than August the 15th. So we're, we have to get that going. I think it's tied pretty much to Mel's studio and the cameras that you're looking at right now. He's looking at some cameras. Uh, in order for us to do that. It may go beyond August the 15th. Develop an email blast with our findings challenging participants with us uh, to stand with us as we demand redress. And that's immediate. We can do that immediately. Uh, and you can go and cut and paste if necessary. The list of violations off of our website. Put it in a document and send it to your friends and say, this is what we've discovered. And our constitutional lawyer has affirmed as uh, a violation or violations of our Constitution. That way we can get the word out, people start talking about it, and we can create a buzz, if you would. Uh, and by the way, uh, Robert says he has a list of uh, about 2,000 names of organizations. We need to get emails out to them, mm -hmm. saying what we are, who we are, what we've discovered, what the violations are, we need that needs to happen, and we need that. I think outreach needs to make that happen. Well, uh, uh, I was going to say, uh, Regina just mentioned that, but she wants to get pieces of that. Robert, was that the same list? Yeah, she wanted to break it up into pieces so we could pass them out to people to work on. Them. Okay, I, I think what we want to do is not phone calls. We want to send email uh, messages to them so we can create a a letter. Boilerplate letter that will go out to everybody in the same way. Seek uh, appearances on conservative talk shows. That's happening right now. We're trying to get on the Jean Turner. Is her name? Jean, Jean Turner. Turner. Yeah, we're trying to get on her show. I'm going to be on a show tomorrow uh, with a talk show host out of Arizona. And uh, yeah, Rod, there's others that are coming. So. Um, I have a, an agent who's out of uh, Tennessee who's booking me. And uh, if I can't do it, I'm going to turn them over to uh, either Ross or Robert or Richard uh, to do those for me. <clears throat> Seek political endorsements no later than August the 15th. We've got people working on that for us right now. It's attempting to try to get Ted Cruz and maybe uh, David Evans and a few others to give us some endorsement. I think we have a candidate here tonight that might after hearing what we're doing, I might want to do so, endorse us as well. Uh, create an interactive, that's done. Uh, contact existing conservative groups, that's in process. And then we will write letters to every senator and every congressman from the state of Texas in order to reveal our findings and to seek their support in our demand for redress. That's in the pipeline now. The letter is done, it's up on the internet, and what we need is for research to get every one of those senators and representatives mailing address in Austin and or their uh, email address. And once they get that, then we can marry the letter to the, the address and make that happen. So research, you've got an assignment, we need that to happen as quickly as possible. All right, now with that said, that's our timeline. Those are things that are happening. Uh, certainly the billboard is contingent on us raising the funds to make that happen. I think the billboard, putting up just one billboard in a strategic location is going to cost us anywhere between six to $8,000. Okay. And if we do more than that, then it's going to cost us a little bit more money. And that's why we need $30,000 to get a jump start. 
It is also our hope that when the money comes in that we can create a little pamphlet, pamphlet that's called Defenders, uh, Constitutional Defenders of Texas, that we can put in a, a pamphlet form that has all violations on it and what we believe is the best thing to do in response to these violations. Mm -hmm. And hand those out along with the DVDs. And so we're going to inundate the community or the public square with as much of our information as possible and wherever we can in the state of Texas. When we get to those Tea Party groups and those conservative groups from all over Texas to recognize who we are and they start inviting us to come, when we come, we need to have DVDs, pamphlets, and handouts that we can put in their hands, defining for them what they can do in response to these violations. It's not enough to say that we've got 50. We've got to tell them, here's what you can do now in light of these violations as the fourth branch of the government. Okay, are you guys ready? Uh, I think we need to end the broadcast. Okay, well, uh, then, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. Well, that brings us to the close of our, our meeting, our regular meeting. We're going to have a, a, a review of our website. And uh, so, sorry we got to let you go, but you certainly can, can go to our website, Constitutional Defenders of Texas, and you can see what we're doing and how we're doing it. And also click on that donation button, make a donation. Uh, we want to move from 11 contributors to as many as 50 before the end of this week. We can get 50 contributors making $50 contribution. It's going to help us significantly move towards our budgetary needs. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of what we're attempting to do here with the Constitutional Defenders of Texas. God bless you. We'll see you next week. That's right.